Humanity's most fundamental relationship is with what we eat. But nowadays, in wealthy countries, we're eating far too much of the wrong things. There are 96 million fat people just like us! And we pay the consequences of our expanding waistlines with an epidemic of diseases that kill heart disease, diabetes, and cancer. That was a complete uh, lack of knowledge about obesity. How did we end up in this situation? And how do we fix it? The relationship between what we eat and how it affects our health is a story that television has been drawn to over and over again, because it's never gone away. Well, I'm greedy. <laughs> this is the story of mankind's attempt to control nature through the wholesale industrialization of food production in our search for enough to eat. This is a process which we can do nothing but admire. It's also the story of the impact this massive shift in our diet has had on the health of each and every one of us. As a nutritionist, I've spent my career researching how what we eat determines what we are. Of course, we now know that eating the right kind of food is crucial for good health, but it's only relatively recently we've taken that as read. The greatest impact of the change in our eating habits is the modern-day epidemic of obesity. In just a couple of generations, we've gone from suffering from the diseases of poverty to being afflicted by the diseases of excess. But it's surprising how long it's taken scientists to understand the true causes of obesity and the real connection to our eating habits. Since it was launched on the airwaves 45 years ago, Horizon has attempted to understand this connection too and has charted science's attempts to change how our food is produced. Initially to combat the real problem of an exploding population with not enough to eat, as well as trying to unearth how and why these changes have impacted so disastrously on our health. The story of our bulging waistlines actually has its roots in another battle. Ironically, one driven by a lack of food. Hunger is always with us. From the dawn of time, poverty has been the destiny of man. Man everywhere scratched an uneasy living from an unyielding soil. Disease and death, famine and plague, natural order of things. Through the course of the 20th century, a rapidly expanding population meant there were an ever-increasing number of mouths to feed. Today it's hard to imagine, but in Europe people were still suffering from diseases of malnutrition, like scurvy and rickets, right up to the Second World War. Well, the war's over, but peace hasn't brought back the plenty. Food is still Europe's top priority problem. In the wake of the war, there was a great impetus to grow and provide more food. Hey, little hen, when, when, when will you lay me an egg for my tea? Industrialization had transformed hey, our ability hen, to manufacture when, goods, when, when, and the same application of technology was now being applied to food production to feed the masses. By the time Horizon hit the airwaves, this process was well underway. More and more farmers were experiencing the shock of the new. Over the last decade, scientists and experts from agricultural firms have persuaded more and more farmers to take a more drastic course, to take up what's become known as tree farming. More and more chickens are being produced tailor-made to fit in with the needs of the factory farmer. One big firm brings out a new model every two or three years. Where can the chicken go from here? The traditional farmyard was rapidly being modernized and the animals brought indoors to increase efficiency and enable mass production.
the chicks are sexed. A skilled job invented by the Japanese and brought by them to Britain in the 1950s. Today, it's possible to separate the cocks from the hens with a guaranteed accuracy of 98%. The hens are put on one side. The cocks, of no commercial value, are gassed. The drive to produce the maximum amount at the minimum cost meant methods that could keep the product flowing as fast as possible, whatever the cost to the animal. Each day, 28,000 chickens are set off down a conveyor belt on a journey which will last 108 minutes. Calmed by hanging upside down, they are then electrically stunned. Now, bit by bit, the chicken is stripped down to a shell to become a convenience food. With a pause of only 35 minutes for lunch and two breaks for tea, all day long, the procession of birds goes by. This is a process which is inevitable, a process which must go on, and a process which we can do nothing but admire. The end of the production line. Conceived by the geneticist, and realized in a factory, it's grown in nine weeks from one and a half ounces to three pounds, the weight that the housewife wants, and at a price that most people can afford. The march of progress was relentless, but in their urge to squeeze maximum efficiency out of the farmyard, scientists sometimes went to extremes. Animals kept completely free of the main farm diseases thrive putting on weight at an exceptional rate and with much lower mortality. By rearing a whole herd of germ-free piglets in incubators and keeping them away from other animals in a sealed off building, commercial herds of pigs for meat have been produced that are the healthiest pigs in the country, with quite an edge over their nearest normal competitors. Any location seemed fair game for food production if it meant increased yield, but some experiments were clearly destined to be abandoned. At Hunterston in Scotland, the nuclear power station is being used for an unusual experiment. The White Fish Authority is applying factory farming techniques to sow. Like broiler chickens, the fish are kept in a controlled environment. In this case, concrete tanks through which flows constant warm water from the power station and this speeds up their rate of growth. Already they're having success. This sole has become fully grown in only 20 months, whereas in natural conditions it would have taken three years. Having streamlined farming, scientists now turned their attention to the rest of food production. But what happens to food as it gets built up into more convenient forms? What happens to the quality? Take bread, a 400 million pound market. It's become the ultimate in predictable products, suited to the majority of consumers. Each piece of dough is accurate to within 1%. It has a precise weight, constituency, and measure of chemical additives, the details closely guarded from rival factories. I'm looking for a, a well-developed loaf, clean internally. I should be looking for a, a nice white appearance, fine texture to suit the housewife for buttering, etc. The bright golden haze on the meadow. There's a bright golden haze on the meadow. The corn is as high as I 